how you started with hempwood where it where it came from and all the hurdles you faced getting to where you are like a condensed version okay. of it so um when i was just starting working in college i was studying engineering and i got um involved with vinyl siding so i worked at certainty as kind of a junior or apprentice line engineer um doing vinyl siding that got me in my first manufacturing setup then i started working with wood flooring and i was studying chinese so i went to china and studied for a semester and then stayed for the summer and worked in a wood flooring mill which was focusing on bamboo so me and some of the people when i graduated uh got involved in trying to figure out how what's called vertical and horizontal bamboo like the old school style of bamboo that's really soft how do you make it hard for repetitive use uh, or so for sorry commercial use so you can have high traffic or a lot of people walking up and the answer was you're going to put an adhesive in it and you're going to compress it together and it makes it hard so when i was part of the team that was figuring that out um i we turned it into a math equation and that math equation that we did for the strand woven bamboo fits into many different types of fast growing raw materials that grab carbon at a really quick rate store it inside of the plant fiber and then we can take that and compress it into a wood substitute so after bamboo um the patents were deemed a monopoly in China and so a license was given to all the people that were uh starting to infringe on the patents and that was when I was working for this company they had acquired my startup and um then I got into eucalyptus which is like eucalyptus grandis is a fast growing plant fiber it's um it grows and you can harvest it in 10 or 15 years um on the plantations and they turn it into the inexpensive plywood Well we use that same math equation to turn that into a hardwood that you can still find everywhere. Um Cali Bamboo still sells that product. And then we started doing some recycled wood products. And the recycled woods were typically like um hardwood plywood mills where you could take the offcuts or the seconds or the bees, the things that couldn't make it into the face grade for the high-end plywood and take that break open the cell structure. uh impregnate it with some adhesives and then compress it into a log so you could use it as a wood substitute. Long comes the 2014 farm bill. So with the farm bill, um a lot of focus got on to him and some of the customers um from when I was with that bamboo company started asking me, "Hey, can't you turn hemp into wood?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, we did something with like something like that and um it was actually called weed wood. We used to joke around and say, "Oh yeah, a piece of weed wood. We took some cannabis plant and turned it into a wood composite." Well, um some of the big companies, uh Mohawk and Shaw both were kicking around the idea because their marketing team saw the excitement in it. And you probably see this when you say, "Oh, hemp is a building material." Lots of interest. It sparks a lot of questions. And so they were saying, yeah, we think there's something there. Is it technically possible? And I went and did some research on it and said, yes it is. But it was still federally illegal for the big corporations and big companies to touch. So when they decided not to pursue it, then I um I went and filed some patents. Did a bunch of the research, filed some patents on it, and Hempwood was born. But yours is very different than other laminated products out there you are you are stickler for using soy based adhesives you refuse to use phenolic resin binders because that's really important to you oh yeah absolutely so i have a degraded lung condition which means my lungs have significant damage from being exposed to chemicals working in the bamboo mills because they were using phenol formaldehyde as the resin in both the liquid and then in drying it and curing it it went into the gas state and then the solid state. So because of my personal issues, I refuse because this one I'm doing myself to use um to use hazardous chemicals, something that's bad for you. I just kind of put my foot down and said that's not going to happen on my watch. And it is more expensive to make it in the United States and it does cost more to not use a bunch of dirty glues in it. But it's the right thing to do 
And rather than having three or four step distribution, like a lot of the companies that will manufacture in Cambodia or in China, and then have an importer and a distributor, and they'll have a retailer, it ends up being 30 cents on the dollar is actually towards the cost of the production of the product. And 70 cents goes to the three or four different links in the supply chain. Um, we sell through dealer network. So it goes us as the manufacturer, 100% in Murray, Kentucky, to flooring retailers and lumber dealers across the United States, where they can then sell it to their customer. And so then it means that we can use higher quality materials like the adhesives, the soy based adhesive, and we can have fair pay for our employees in the factory where Amazon is arguing about we're going to pay our people $15 and that's been a big fight for years. That's where we start at. And we're in Murray, Kentucky, where at $15 an hour, you can buy a house. And so making it and paying people properly and using the good products is worth a lot more than having an extra link in the supply chain to us.